In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joyous feast. Prasicum. Christ is born. Merry Christmas. Uh, good morning all, and a joy to be with you here on this Christmas morning. Uh, as yet again, I feel like we're getting snow here in, uh, uh, in Ketuit, that we weren't even getting 10 miles away up in, uh, up in Sagamore this morning. So what a, what a joyous and beautiful uh, coating here on this, uh, on this Christmas morning. Uh, I, I was thinking as you were singing through some of the hymns of, uh, of Orthros this morning, I just don't understand why the West can't pick up our hymnody. They want to keep on singing, you know, joy to the world. They could be singing things like, The sea monster spat forth Jonah, as it had received him like a babe from the womb. I mean, come on. It's pretty catchy. So, but uh, it is, these are beautiful and really very rich hymns that help us to understand not just that we celebrate the birth of a baby today, but that we celebrate the coming of him who was prophesied, that we celebrate and rejoice that all of the Old Testament scriptures have now been fulfilled. Uh, they have been completed, perfected, uh, indeed fulfilled in this one who comes, yes, as a babe, uh, and yet comes as the very king of all. Uh, last night on our way home, we heard one of the hymns, the King of Glory comes, the nations, the nation rejoices. One that I remember well growing up, um, but reminded me, of course, also uh, of, comes from the Psalms, uh, and is our reminder indeed uh, that He is the King of Glory, uh, who comes, um, and that we prepare to have come again uh, in a very different manner than He came that first time. So uh, we prepare ourselves uh, in this as well. And this is what we did this Nativity Fast. This is what we continue to do uh, even during this Nativity Feast. Uh, we still are in preparation of him coming. And we prepare now, even here this morning, as we do for each liturgy, we prepare ourselves as well, for he comes to us even now. Um, the, as beautiful and wonderful as that little hymn is about Jonah, uh, really, I was um, you know, thinking, also reflecting about, I'm going to read a, a sermon here in just a minute, but um, the, uh, also we heard this morning in the, the, the uh, Kentucky and Equus for the Nativity of Christ, Equus is, Bethlehem hath opened Eden, come and see, we have found joy in secret. Herod didn't know where this one was being born even, right? We have found, we have found joy in secret. Come and let us take Possession of the paradise that is within the cave. There the unwatered root hath appeared, from which forgiveness floweth forth. There is found the undug well, whence David longed to drink of old. There the virgin hath borne a babe and made the thirst of Adam and David to cease straight away. Therefore, let us hasten to this place where now is born a young child, God before the ages. May we also who thirst like Adam and David be quenched by the very living water that comes from Christ himself. The I'm not going to read the, the Sermon of St. John Chrysostom on Nativity. We do this each year on uh, Pascha as well, as we say is Paschal Sermon, but his words to us on Nativity are also quite beautiful. Behold a new and wondrous mystery. My ears resound to the shepherd's song, piping no soft melody, but chanting full forth a heavenly hymn. The angels sing. The archangels blend their voice in harmony. The cherubim hymn their joyful praise. The seraphim exalt his glory. All join to praise this holy feast, beholding the Godhead here on earth and man in heaven. He who is above now for our redemption dwells here below. And he that was lowly is by divine mercy 
raised. Bethlehem this day resembles heaven, hearing from the stars the singing of the angelic voices, and in place of the sun, enfolds within itself on every side the sun of justice. And ask not how, for where God wills, the order of nature yields. For he willed, he had the power, he descended, he redeemed, all things yielded in obedience to God. This day he who is, is born, and he who is, becomes what he was not. For when he was God, he became man, yet not departing from the Godhead that is his. Nor yet by any loss of divinity became he man, nor through increase became he God from man. But being the Word, he became flesh, his nature because of impassibility remaining unchanged. And so the kings have come. They have seen the heavenly king that has come upon the earth, not bringing with him angels, nor archangels, nor thrones, nor dominations, nor powers, nor principalities, but treading a new and solitary path, he has come forth from a spotless womb. Since this heavenly birth cannot be described, neither does his coming amongst us in these days permit of too curious scrutiny. Though I know that a virgin this day gave birth, and I believe that God was begotten before all time, yet the manner of this generation I have learned to venerate in silence, and I accept that this is not to be probed too curiously with wordy speech. For with God we look not for the order of nature, but rest our faith in the power of him who works. What shall I say to you? What shall I tell you? I behold a mother who has brought forth, I see a child come to this light by birth. The manner of his conception I cannot comprehend. Nature here rested. While the will of God labored, O oh ineffable grace, the only begotten who is before all ages, who cannot be touched or be perceived, who is simple without body, has now put on my body that is visible and liable to corruption. For what reason? That coming amongst us he may teach us, and teaching lead us by the hand to the things that men cannot see. For since men believe that the eyes are more trustworthy than the ears, they doubt of that which they do not see. And so he has deigned to show himself in bodily presence that he may remove all doubt. Christ, finding the holy body and soul of the virgin, builds for himself a living temple. And as he had willed, formed there a man from the virgin, and putting him on this day came forth unashamed of the lowliness of our nature. For it was to him no lowering to put on what he himself had made. Let that handiwork be forever glorified, which became the cloak of its own creator. For as in the first creation of flesh, man could not be made before the clay had come into his hand. So neither could this corruptible body be glorified and it to, until it had first become the garment of its maker. What shall I say? And how shall I describe this birth to you? For this wonder fills me with astonishment. The Ancient of Days has become an infant. He who sits upon the sublime and heavenly throne now lies in a manger. And he who cannot be touched, who is simple without complexity and incorporeal, now lies subject to the hands of men. He who has broken the bonds of sinners is now bound by an infant bands. But he has decreed that ignominy shall become honor, infamy be clothed with glory, and total humiliation the measure of his goodness. For this he assumed my body, that I may became, become capable of his word, taking my flesh, he gives me his spirit. And so he bestowing and I receiving, he prepares for me the treasure of life. He takes my flesh to sanctify me. He gives me his spirit that he may save me. Come then, let us observe the feast. Truly wondrous is the whole chronicle of the nativity. For this day, the ancient slavery is ended. The devil confounded. The demons take to flight. The power of death is broken. Paradise is unlocked. The curse is taken away. Sin is removed from us, error driven out, truth has been brought back, the speech of kindliness diffused and spreads on every side, a heavenly way of life 
has been implanted on the earth. Angels communicate with men without fear, and men now hold speech with angels. Why is this? Because God is now on earth and man in heaven. On every side all things commingle, but he became flesh. He did not become God, he was God. Wherefore he became flesh, so that he whom heaven did not contain, a manger, would this day receive. He was placed in a manger, so that he by whom all things are nourished may receive an infant's food from his virgin mother. So the father of all ages, as an infant at the breast, nestles in the virginal arms, that the Magi may more easily see him. Since this day the Magi too have come, and made a beginning of withstanding tyranny, and the heavens give glory, as the Lord is revealed by a star. To him then, who out of confusion has wrought a clear path, to Christ, to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, we awful, offer all praise, now and forever. Amen. Christ is born. Lord.